All right, good morning, everybody. This is James Morris, Tuesday morning show here on Asset Master Auto Technician. And I was talking to someone yesterday talking about timing chains, timing belts, how we've come full circle. Years ago, uh, we went from timing chains uh, to when overhead cam engines came out to timing belts. And that seemed to be the way things were going. Everything was timing belts on. And timing belts had anywhere from you change the timing belt anywhere from every 60,000 miles to 105,000 miles, somewhere in that general area. Because if you didn't change them and they slip, well, damage could occur to the top of the engine, such as a valve being bent. I don't know if you can see it, but this valve right here is bent because this timing, chain, timing belt right here, the teeth were gone. They're just, they just, just they, that's it. They're gone. They, they will slip off. There's no warning for a timing belt when it goes, I mean, you just can't take the cover off and look at it and go, okay, that looks bad, that looks good. No, they'll look good until something happens and they'll just come apart. You have to go by time or by miles, like oil changes. Oil changes, they'll tell you every three months, 3,000 miles, every six months, every 6,000 miles. Well, it's the same thing holds true about, well, all other fluids as well, but also with the timing belts. Timing belts normally are five years, 60,000 miles or 10 years, 100,000 miles. I don't know which car you have, but uh, every car is a little different. If you, go to, if you call, go to a shop, and you can, any shop out there, and they can go to their, uh, their reference page. Like if I go to All Data, I go to All Data Technician Reference. Oh, come on, I need to spell it right first. It'll tell me exactly what kind of, uh, what the, what the uh, change, uh, uh, mileage and time is supposed to be on a vehicle. And that's one of the things that I've seen over the years, like, oh, no, Mitsubishi, they're a non-interference engine. Some Mitsubishis, such as a 3.0 engine, is a non-interference engine. That's a 3.0 single overhead cam engine. It won't bend valves. But that same engine that's a dual overhead cam engine will bend valves. Same block, just different heads. They will bend valves. Uh, you've got a lot of cars out there that have, any car that has a timing chain on it, if the timing chain slips any more than two or three teeth, it can bend valves. Uh, that's one of the reasons that, that they've gone from <clears throat> from timing chains, excuse me, from timing belts to timing chains because they found out people really didn't like the idea every five years having to spend thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollars on average to put a timing belt in, and a lot of people didn't. They wouldn't put it. You know, they wouldn't do the maintenance, and they did the maintenance after it was too late. After the timing belt has broken or slipped, and now they're sitting on the side of the road, disgusted, mad. And they just trade their car in. They said, "Okay, that's great. We'll just trade the car in and get another one." Well, I don't think they said that, but they probably said, "That's what we're going to do. We're tired of this. You know, it's going to cost so many thousands of dollars to fix this engine now." You know, it's got 100,000 miles on it. Let's just go ahead and get another car. Well, 100,000 miles isn't a lot of miles on today's cars. I've got lots and lots and lots and lots of cars that come in here every day with 150,000 plus miles on them. I would venture to say an average car that comes into my shop has 100 plus thousand miles. Now, years ago, back when I first went in this business back in the, uh, in the 60s, back in the late 60s, early 70s, working on cars, by the time a car got 70, 80,000 miles on, it was considered high mileage. It was just, it was time to get rid of the car. We really, I don't think Americans traveled half as much then as we do now. Today, it is not uncommon for an average person to put 15,000 miles a year on a car, especially depending on what part of the country, I mean, what part of the, how far they have to travel to go to work. It's not uncommon if you live in the Atlanta area to drive, that I know, I have family live up there, to drive an hour or more to come to work. I, I'm, I, that's at 60 miles an hour. I mean, so we're talking about you have to drive 60 miles or more to get to work. That's how, you know, that is what I've seen in some metropolitan areas. So, so people can put 15,000 miles a year on a car. So in, you know, six, seven, eight years, the car has lots and lots of miles on it. And years ago, that engine would be wore out. It'd be smoking. It'd be leaking oil. It'd be smoking oil too, especially. It'd be misfiring. You know, you have a check engine light if we had check engine lights back in the 60s and 70s, but we don't have that anymore. Now we have computers and the computer's job, the number one job of a car's computer is to save the catalytic converter. And that's pretty darn good because in order to save the catalytic converter, it has to make sure there's not too much gas going in the car, not too little gas going in the car, but just the right amount. 
trying to keep that fuel ratio at a certain 14.7 to 1 stoichiometric fuel ratio for all you gearhead out, gearheads out there that know what the stoichiometric fuel ratio is a 14.7 to 1 and that's what it tries to do and by keeping it at that rate and keeping everything working like it's supposed to it makes the catalytic converter will last forever what kills the catalytic converter is things that uh, don't work like misfires fuel pumps that work don't work work don't work i've seen that happen car goes down the road it loses power and all of a sudden it comes back to life again drives down the road another 15 minutes all of a sudden loses power comes back again customer goes i have no idea what's wrong with the car we check it out put a wave pattern amp clamp on uh, on the uh, fuel pump wires and we'll see it draw on 18 20 amps we'll see it uh, have a bad spot on the uh, on the armature and we say hey you brought a bad fuel pump going out it's drawing too many amps and the pattern doesn't look good and your fuel pressure is a little lower than it should be as well those are the you know there's four tests on a fuel pump uh, you know so there's a lot of there's a lot more involved in saying a fuel pump's bad just because it has low oil excuse me low fuel pressure it could have low fuel pressure because of a voltage drop bad <clears throat> bad fuel pump relay not allowing 12 volts to get to the relay that could be it i mean I, normally when you see that you got other problems because when you get a lot when you get 75 to 100,000 miles on a car we start seeing fuel pump problems and we start seeing timing chain problems and timing belt problems especially if people haven't kept the oil changed on timing you know, on cars that have timing chains by the time you get 100,000 miles on it if you haven't been changing your oil properly using the best oil you may be having to spend a lot of money on a timing chain and that gets rather expensive on some cars three thousand four thousand dollars on some cars just to change the timing chains the tensioners and the uh, timing servos on there uh, that, like if you have a variable valve timing like on a ford 5.3 5.4 engine That's, if you've got those on there by the time you change the solenoids and change the actuators and change the guides the tensioners the runners the oil change the filter the oil pan gasket the timing cover gasket water pump all this stuff has to come off and by the time you put it all back together again, three to four thousand dollar bill is not uncommon. You can avoid that problem on your timing chain by changing your oil regularly, using the best oil you can get. Will save that timing chain from going bad. Uh, and don't go more than six thousand miles on oil changes using full synthetic oil. Now I have a lot of people out there that go six thousand miles on regular oil. I got one sitting in my shop right now. He's, he comes into my shop with check engine lights on, going, hey, you know, I got check engine lights on, da, 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 da. I go, yeah, okay, we'll take a look at it, see what's going on. He says, well, I've had my cam, I had my cam solenoid changed and uh, my, variable, no, my variable valve timing solenoid changed and this changed and that changed, even before I get to the codes. And I go, really? And I plug it in and I get the codes. I go, yep, P0017. I said, that tells me you're due for an oil change on this model car because I don't hear it rattling. I don't hear a timing chain rattle. I said, on this type engine that I see on the General Motors, if you run regular oil, by the time you get 3,000 miles, that light's going to be on because that, that actuator gets stuck because the non-synthetic oil is not slippery enough to let this thing move like it's supposed to. The filter gets a bypass mode. It doesn't filter. Trash gets passed. It gets in the little, it gets in the solenoid, hangs it up. My advice is let's change the oil, put full synthetic oil in it. You don't go more than 6,000 miles between oil changes, and this problem will stop. Because I reminded him, any time you get a code that has P00 first, if you get a code that has P0017, P00121615, whatever, it means it's anything but electrical. That means it's mechanical. It could be the oil is dirty. It could be the timing chain has slipped. It could be something broken, literally broken. But in most cases, I found out when I get a P0017 on solenoids or a P0012 or 15 or 16, and if it has to do with, with uh, solenoids that control the timing advancement, I would venture to say before you do anything invasive and change any parts, change the oil and filter. You would be surprised how many cars we fix. It's not just me saying that. You can get on the um, on websites uh, that talk about like uh, Napa fix, Identifix, Identifix. We ha we, that's the first thing it says on there. We'll be sitting there typing in P0017, type down what causes it, what to check, how to check it. Then it will look over there well, what the fixes were that actually required it to be fixed. And you'll see 497 change oil and filter, you know, 15 change the solenoid. 
10, you know, <laughs> replace the wiring in it or repair the wiring. But most of them are just changing the oil when you get something as simple as that. But timing belts, there's no oil to change on it. As a matter of fact, you don't want oil to get on this timing belt because if this timing belt gets oil on it, it doesn't take long before these teeth are gone. I've seen them soak the oil and they'll sit for a month or two because someone's gone out of town or gone on vacation or whatever. And they come back, fire the car up, and the car tries to start up and all of a sudden, boom, the belt slips and it takes all the teeth out. Next thing I know is coming in here, here on a record service and we look at it and say, well, your options are replace the engine, replace the head, or you replace the car. Those are going to be your options. Replace the engine, replace the cylinder head and timing belt, or replace the car. Not a whole lot. These aren't good options. That's crisis management. And that's one of the things we try to do on the show is to keep you from having crisis management. Too many people, you know, just don't think, you know, sometimes they don't get, think ahead. And timing belts or something that is something you need to put in your budget to make sure that you can afford to take care of whenever your owner's manual says it needs to be done. Remember, you're a severe service driver, so do not go by normal service driving uh, applications on timing belts. If, if, if it says it under severe service, 60,000, do it. Not 80,000, 60,000, do it. It's best if you do it a little before the time it is. Because I've seen cars that say good for 60,000 miles or five years, and then on the It'll go at five years and I have 48,000 miles on the customer. Ah, oh, it's only got five years on. Don't worry about it. I got another 12,000 miles. By the time they get to the sixth year, they got 58,000 miles on them and the timing belt has broken. Now they're replacing the car, replacing the engine, or, or maybe hoping to get it fixed or give it away to somebody. But <clears throat> that's what I've seen over the years. So better safe than sorry. Have that money put back in reserve. Timing belts on average, by the time you change the timing belt, the tensioners, the idler pulleys, all the cam seals, the crank seals, all the things that go with it, water pump. You can spend anywhere from $1,100 to $1,800 depending on the make, model, and year of car. Anyone that's advertising timing belt jobs for $175, that's a bait and switch. I'm serious. All you're getting is maybe a timing belt if you get that. And they may put a timing belt on there, but it won't be factory. It won't be an aftermarket one. It may not be the right one, but it'll be one on there and you'll get it. But I'm going to tell you something. I have never seen anyone get a very inexpensive timing belt put on their car without having problems six months to a year down the road. Normally what happens is the cam seals leak, the tensioner fails, the belt slips. The next thing we know, we got bent valves. So what you paid to get done to make where your car would be dependable, you might as well have just take that money and toss it down the toilet and let it flush down because that way Mr. Hobbs might, Mr. Scott Hobbs might be able to find it when they clean your septic tank out. But that's about one of the only thing I can, that's what you're doing with your money is wasting it away if you get a cheap, inexpensive. I see people all the time. I can get a timing belt done for $200. I say, go, please. I can't stop you. I said, I'm, I'm, please go there, but ask what you're getting first. Are you getting attentioners? Are you getting idler pulleys? Are they changing the cam seals, the crank seals, the water pump that's actually driving, is being driven by the timing belt? Or are they just putting a timing belt on there? And most of them come back and say, all they were going to do is put a timing belt on it. And when I ask them to start adding all those things on there that needed to be done after 100,000 miles, they look at me and go, we've never done that. And I go, okay, let them do that then. And uh, most of them come back and go, you know, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. And that's exactly what, if the price seems too good to be true, it probably is. If you got a car question, give us a call at 850-763-0555 every Monday through Friday. We're right here on Fox 28. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back.